welcome everyone to our usual uh, learning platform where we exchange ideas, where we learn from one another, uh, where we continue growing together as leaders. Well, this is a global meeting and we have uh, participants from all over the globe. I want to appreciate each one of you. Already we have registered participants from Kenya, from Ghana, from Namibia, from Somalia, from Sudan, from Canada, from the United Kingdom, from USA, from Uganda, from Tanzania, from Ethiopia, from Botswana, from Zanzibar, from Zambia, which country am I forgetting? Sorry, from Egypt, thank you very much. Uh, I, if I've not mentioned your country, please just put it on the chat. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining the meeting. And I want to appreciate everyone who is following us through our Facebook page of Education for Sustainable Development. And as usual, we recognize the fact that we are not here by our own making. We are here because God has enabled us to be here. And so let me request my student, Benjamin Mauko, to pray for us. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is Kenya. Let us, uh, let us bow down and have a word of prayer. We are praying, Almighty God, Father, who art in heaven, we come before thee this evening requesting for your wisdom as we start our, our lesson and our deliberations today. Oh God, how I pray that you are what we are going to discuss is of great benefit in terms of sustainable education. I request that you bless every soul that is going to uh, address us so that uh, whatever we do, whatever we say, is of benefit to the whole mankind. I pray this short prayer, believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And now allow me to share my slides. The presentation is here. Stand up. Uh, let me share. Okay. Uh, Bosco, please unmute mute yourself. Sorry, mute yourself. Good. Thank you, Benjamin, for the prayer. We appreciate the fact that uh, it is not by our own making that we have made it here. And today we are going to focus on uh, sustainable development goal number nine to goal number 17, because um, we already looked at goal number one to goal number, goal number eight. Let me request Fanuel, please assist me to mute people. Help me to mute. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. Uh, where are the participants? Okay. Let me mute them. Let me yeah, mute them. Yeah, please. I will appreciate. I'll appreciate. Okay, so I don't have to stop sharing. Mm. Okay, let me have several co-hosts so that I'm able to... Okay. 
Okay, good. Okay, so in case of anybody um, uh, unmuting, please just help me so that uh, we are able to move uh, with a lot of ease. Okay, I, as I was saying, today we are going to focus on, are you seeing my screen? Why am I not seeing the screen? Okay, we are focusing on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, but today we will simply look at goal number nine through to goal number 17 so that we are able to say that we have at least covered all the 17 sustainable development goals. And so I am doing this on behalf of different organizations that I am inclined to. The first one being uh, the environmental discipleship program that is global. The second one being a leaders of all nations international, Loani. The third one being ESV Kenya Movement. The fourth one being Kenya Canadian Empowerment Network. And the platform that we are using is the Edu Channel for Sustainable Development. It is our belief that by doing what we are doing, we are impacting uh, the world. We are making a difference. And so we are doing this to help those people that are not able to maybe pay for, for trainings, just to learn about education for sustainable development, to get it here free of charge. And so we are making a difference. We are muddy. We are simply doing what you are calling mud. So as we do the mud, we are giving love because we believe by giving love, we get love. We have to continue uh, uh, thinking about lead, learn, inspire, lead, because we are leaders. If you have to be an effective leader, you must purpose to continue learning, lifelong learning, as we are told in Sustainable Development Goal number four. So continue learning, and in the process of learning, purpose to inspire. If you are a facilitator of learning, if you are a so-called, in quotes, teacher or trainer, you need to learn, inspire, and lead for you to be able to make a difference. And for education for sustainable development, which is education that enables us to meet our needs today without compromising the ability of the future generation, we focus on results. We are not so much interested on the numbers. We are so much interested on the impact. What results are we, are we having? After doing what you're doing, what can you show people? What success story can you tell us? And as we come here learning, we will always have different facilitators. And as these facilitators teach us, uh, remember it is about fan. Anything that we are learning today, even if you've had it before, take it as if it is forever new. Education for sustainable development is education that brings people together because we have to be able to be peaceful at all times. For us to be able to make the difference that we want to make, transforming the world through ESD, we have to purpose to promote peace at all times. And so education for sustainable development ambassadors are all peace ambassadors. In anything that you want to do to make a difference, remember Dean, do it now. Avoid procrastination. If you want to do it, start small. Start using whatever you, are, you have close to you. Use the, uh, the locally available resources. You don't have to go for big, big things to be able to make the difference that we are talking about in education for sustainable development. Just use what you have and do it now. Always 
are we? Ask what if. Don't get stuck and stop doing what you, you, you are dreaming of doing to make a difference in the world. If you find a challenge, ask the question, what if? What if I did it this way? What if I collaborated with this organization? What if I talked to so-and-so? Always ask the what if question. And here, what we are simply doing, we are going beyond the obvious. It is not common for anybody to think about a webinar that is free of charge for the whole year and another year. We are simply going beyond the obvious because we know we are making a difference and we are changing lives. And as a facilitator, as a, an educator, whoever you are that is in this platform, you need to go with the triple L, lifelong learner, be a lifelong learner. That is why as facilitators of learning in this platform, we usually say we are facilitators of learning because in the process of facilitating learning, we are also learning. And one thing that I want to encourage each one of us on this platform, because we always recognize the presence of our maker, Allah, God, at all times. In everything that you are doing to make a difference, do it with excellence. Do it to your level best. Give it your best shot at all times. Don't do it because a boss is looking at you or a boss is waiting for results. No, do it because you love what you're doing and you're doing it as though you're doing it unto the Lord. And whatever you start doing, never ever give up. Never ever give up. That is, I'm actually doing this to show you that it is possible to be done. Resilience in everything that we are doing is important to continue persisting on what you know is going to make a difference. And you can only do, do that by doing small acts of kindness. Always do small things that make someone, that can make someone feel like they have been blessed because we are blessed to be a blessing. And in everything that you're doing, always do something new. Don't continue doing the same things that you have been doing because if you continue doing the same things that you have been doing, you will never find any different result. Do something new and get a different result and appreciate the success out of it. Lead, live your dream. Don't be swayed away if you have been destined to be the one to make a difference in the world. You have a dream. Go for it. Live your dream. Do what you can do to achieve your dream. And today I'm giving you your Because of the sustainable development goals, Yeah, you need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of others and you need to take care of the planet. And so Yop, always take care of yourself. Have your time, have self time, what I call self time. Have time to reflect on what you're doing in life, how you're doing it, the difference you're making, how you can improve, have your time. And also have time for others, have time for the planet. And that is the reason as to why we are here. And to be able to do this, we always think about the pillars of behavior change because we are here to make a difference, a sustainable change. To do this, we have to engage the rational mind, amplify what's working, explain why and what specific actions are needed, Motivate the person. The person to be motivated is me. The person to be motivated is you. Connect with feelings and identity. Make the effort small, support, train, and encourage a growth mindset. Do not go for the things that will make you feel bad or be negative about life. Always think about improving and improving and improving. Shape the path, improve the physical environment, 
And by so doing, you need to engage people who are like-minded like you. Engage champions, leverage on useful habits and useful systems to succeed in achieving what we want to achieve. Even as we're going to learn about the SDGs, you must involve the three H, the head, the heart, and the heart. The head will collect all the information, have everything from the books, have everything from the webinars, have it in the head. When you have it, you become knowledgeable. And if you are knowledgeable, you are powerful. But it is not enough to be knowledgeable. It is not enough to be powerful if you are not seeing anything that you can show people that here are the results of what I have in my head. And so take this knowledge to the heart. Develop passion. Do things with a passion. Enjoy what you're doing. If you are giving a service, give it with a lot of love. Give it with a lot of joy. If you are sweeping your house, sweep it with joy. Love what you're doing to be able to make a difference. The only way to make a difference is to take it to the hands. If you love it, you will do it to your best. And so the head, the heart, and the hands in education for sustainable development for us to achieve the SDGs is a must. There is no shortcut about it. And so the sustainable development goals, the 17 of them, we have talked about them in the past. But for the benefit of those who are joining us, probably for the first time, it's just good to just have like, uh, as in just see what we have here. Yeah. And to be able to be successful, uh, to advance the sustainable development goals, we need all these skills. The skills required for success. As we start the process of learning and, and uh, uh, embracing the SDGs, these skills are very important. Reading, digital, uh, collaboration, adaptability, writing, numeracy, communication, creativity and innovation, problem solving, name them. So all these are needed. The last time we were talking about SDG 1 to SDG, SDG 8, I requested you to look at this picture. And um, uh, most of you identified several things that you saw, but we were focusing majorly on the eyes. And we said the eyes stand for focus. Yeah, these are eyes of an a cat, an animal, and we went down, we narrowed down the animal to be a lion. And we said when a lion wants to catch some prey, it will focus on that which it has identified and goes for it. And if it goes for it, it must catch it. And that is why in the process of wanting to make a difference in the world for the sake of the future, if you identify something that you need to do to make a difference, go for it. Remain focused until you see the results. And so here are the SDGs. Goal number one, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, uh, partnerships for the goals, and that is it. If you look at these goals as they are, they are actually everything that we need to make a difference. Um, last, last time we listened to this video, I don't want us to listen to it again uh, because of time. Uh, let us now look at what was 
or rather what is in goal number one? We discussed these two questions. What are the main causes of poverty in our local community? And what steps can be taken to address them? We discussed this in our groups. How do you think poverty in urban areas differs from poverty in rural areas? What targeted strategies might be needed for each? Remember, sustainable development goal number one aims to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. This goal focuses on ensuring equal access to economic resources, reducing vulnerability to disaster, and improving the resilience of those living in poverty. Uh, if you look at goal number two, goal number two is on hunger. What are some of the sustainable agricultural practices that can help increase food productivity without harming the environment? And so we discussed this and we said that goal number two aims to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, and also promote sustainable agriculture. It actually focuses on ensuring everyone has access to sufficient and nutritious food. Underline sufficient and nutritious food. Some of the food, please mute the person. Some of the food that, uh, Vivian, please mute yourself. Some of the, the food that we, we, we take, forcing uh, us to suffer like um, uh, the issues that we have, things to do with cancer and others, is because of the choice of food that we put on the table for our families. So goal number two is very, very important. So these are the questions we discussed when we were discussing goal number three. Good health and well-being. What are the biggest health challenges facing, faced by underprivileged communities in our country? Uh, how can these challenges be addressed through policy and community efforts? And we delved into this and the discussion was great. How does public health influence economic and social stability within a community? We learned that goal number three actually aims to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. From that baby who is in the stomach or rather the fetus through to the old person who is 140 years old. This includes reducing maternal and child mortality, combating diseases and promoting mental health. Mental health is the thing now because of the challenges that we are facing in our homes, in our countries, and so on and so forth. And now, goal number four, which is very vital and critical to all of us, and especially the educators, quality education. Quality education. We discussed these pertinent questions. We talked about the barriers that exist to achieving quality education for all, particularly the less developed regions. How can these barriers be overcome? We went and delved into that at length and the discussion was good. How important is technology in education today? This is an area that is pertinent technology, especially where we are at the moment, we are talking about artificial intelligence. How many educators have embraced artificial intelligence? Discuss the potential benefits and drawbacks. We dealt on this at large and it was great. And it is important for me to summarize by saying that sustainable development goal number four aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning, the song that I, I always have, lifelong learning, opportunities for all. 
This goal emphasizes the importance of providing quality education to all children as well as adults. And so never say never, never say that you are old, that you cannot learn. And this is an image that we discussed at length when we were talking about goal number four. Because the education systems in our countries have left our graduates this way. And so the question was, who has made this person this way? Is it themselves or is it us, the educators, or is it uh, the, the system or is it the policies that we have in place and so on and so forth. And then we talked about gender equality. I'm, this one I'm moving fast because I'm just giving a summary because we've already done this, so that we have enough time to look at goal number nine through to goal number 17. So goal number five is on gender equality. What are some practical ways to promote gender equality in workplaces and schools in our society? So we also talked about cultural norms on gender equality. How can awareness and education alter harmful norms? And we realized that uh, looking at some statistics, yeah, uh, kind of there is a lot of inequality. Like in, uh, in South Africa, if you look at the average earnings by gender, the male gender earns far much more than the female gender. And the question was, why? Yeah. Is it possible for us to, to be at par? So that was the conversation. And so sustainable development goal number five aims to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. This includes ending discrimination, violence, and harmful practices, and ensuring equal opportunities in leadership and decision making, even in our own homes. How often do we allow the other gender to make a decision that we can all accept? Is it only one gender that gives orders so that the family is at peace? So it is important that we think about gender equality from the level of our family setups. Goal number six is on clean water and sanitation. And these are the questions that we discussed. You can take a, a screenshot if you want so that you can carry them on. Why I is would... access? Why is access to clean water and sanitation fundamental to development? Discuss the ripple effect on health, education, and economy. What innovative water conservation practices could be implemented in our local area to improve water sustainability? Very important. And so goal number six aims to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for everyone. Access to clean water and sanitation is essential for good for our health, of course, and well-being. And when we see our people go collecting water from dirty pools like this, the question is, what are we doing or what can we do to change the scenario? Goal number seven is on affordable and clean energy. Yeah. Look at these children concentrating and enjoying their reading at night because they have a solar, solar light on top of them, whichever it is. So these are the questions that we discussed. What renewable energy sources are most viable for our geographical area? It is important to customize to your area. 
What are the barriers to their implementation? We need to discuss the importance of energy efficiency in homes and businesses, and how can individuals and communities contribute to this goal? And so goal number seven aims to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Access to clean energy is crucial for purposes of development and environmental sustainability. And so check what source of energy are we using in our homes, in our schools, in our offices, very, very important. Next is goal number eight, uh, that is on decent, uh, decent work and economic growth. What do you call decent? How can we ensure that economic growth benefits everyone, including the poorest sectors in our societies? Uh, this group, we discussed the potential impacts of automation and artificial intelligence on employment and what strategies can be adopted to ensure technological advancements lead to more decent jobs, not fewer not fewer. People are so worried that AI is going to take their jobs. So this was a discussion that was vital and very important. And so goal number eight aims to promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. This goal actually focuses on creating jobs, um, especially job opportunities and ensuring fair work conditions, that everyone is safe and secure, even as they are doing whatever they are doing to earn a living. And this was very important to us. We talked about this diagram at length which outlines the 10 steps to develop a sustainable community and green infrastructure plan. We talked about um, organizing stakeholders, developing a community vision, establishing goals, uh, assessing assets and opportunities, identify approaches to add green infrastructure, uh, factor, brownfields and hazardous waste sites into planning, plan for long-term operations and maintenance, develop strategies for local funding, identify federal government resources and monitor and measure progress. And that takes us now to goal number nine. Now from goal number nine, this is where we want now to delve into and we are going to discuss this in our groups i am going to put you into groups so group number one you are going to look at goal number nine please take a screenshot of these questions so that you you are not left out in the discussion these are the questions for goal number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. What are some examples of infrastructure projects in your community that have significantly improved local industries and innovation? How can small and medium enterprises be supported to foster innovation and sustainable industrialization in your region? Now, the group that is going to discuss this will be group number one. Group number two, you are going to talk about reduced inequality. What strategies, take a screenshot, what strategies can be implemented to reduce income inequality in both urban and rural areas? How can we ensure that marginalized groups have equal access to opportunities and resources in our community? So take a screenshot 
Group number two, you are the going. Yes. I think there is no uh, nothing to be screenshot for the second question. <coughs> nothing. Can you call? Is somebody seeing um uh, my slides? Yes, we can see the slides. I've seen SDG 10, reduce inequality, and there are two questions. Yeah. Okay, probably somebody... We can see it, Madam. We can see it, Dr. Thank you. Some of us are seeing it, Dr. Thank you very much. Okay, goal That's number 11. Thing. Good. Goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities. These are the questions to be discussed. What are some practical steps our city can take to become more sustainable and resilient to climate change? How can community engagement be enhanced to ensure that urban planning meets the needs of all residents? That is group number three. Group that number one, we are not seeing it. That one, we are not seeing it. You're not seeing this? We are seeing you instead. Oh. We can see it. We can see it. Some of you us can, can see, see it. it. I can see. Yeah, please we take can a see. Yes. Doctor, yes, it is not. Can, can see. I think I just your phone. I just your laptop. Yeah. OK, not thank clear. you very much. Thank you very we much. OK. So goal number 12 is on responsible consumption and production. If I can pause here, I love this because of a term I learned in Israel, prosumer. Produce what you can consume. And so what are some ways individuals can contribute to responsible consumption and reduce waste in their daily lives? How can businesses adopt more sustainable pro production practices and promote eco-friendly products? Those are the questions for group number five or four? Group number five. Group number six, climate action. Climate action. What climate change impacts have you observed in your area? And what can be to mitigate? Winter, John Winter, please mute yourself. Admins, admins, please help me to mute them. What climate change impacts have you observed in your area? And what measures can be taken to mitigate these effects? How can local governments and communities work together to develop and implement effective climate action plans? That is group number six. Group number seven, life below water. What are the biggest threats to marine life in your region and how can they be addressed? How can communities promote the sustainable use of ocean resources and raise awareness about marine conservation? The next group, group number seven, life on land. What initiatives can be taken to protect and restore local forests and biodiversity? How can sustainable agriculture Practices be promoted to ensure health and terrestrial ecosystems. I hope you've taken the screenshot. Group number eight, you are going to look at goal number 16. What are the key challenges to achieving peace and justice in your community and how can they be overcome? Number two, how can we strengthen local institutions to ensure they are inclusive, accountable, and effective? And finally, group nine, you are going to look at goal number 17, partnerships and the goals. 
what role can local partnerships play in achieving the SDGs and how can they be fostered? How can different sectors, government, private, civil society, collaborative effecti uh, effectively to support sustainable development initiatives? And goal number, goal number 13, we are going to have it again on the plenary because usually there are some people who remain at the plenary. So you are going to discuss goal number 13. Those of us, who will not find their ways to the breakout rooms, you will form the major team that is going to continue with the discussion of the recording. And so at this point, I want to take you to breakout rooms. Let me stop sharing so that we can now go to um breakout rooms so i have nine seven eight nine groups from goal number nine through to goal number 17 and then please uh, when you get to your room Unmute yourself. Don't mute because you are just few, so that you can have a healthy discussion. Identify a president and a secretary who will be taking your points. So the secretary will share uh, what you will have discussed in brief with us. And then I will post the main, all the the points that we'll have discussed, I will share with the group on the ESD wall. So if you're not on the ESD wall, I'm going to share the link so that you join that group so that you don't miss out. And so please, from this point, join your group. Join your room and start the discussion. Please go to your room. Grace, let me check. Um, I was in room seven. Um, uh, Grace, you're not yes. able to see your room? No, I'm not. Let me see. Let me see which room to take you. Uh, okay, you can remain at the plenary and you can lead the discussion on uh, climate change. Okay. Yeah. Moses, Talia, Masese, Lucy, Baraki. What? Please join your rooms. Lucy, go to room number seven. Masese, go to room number three. Moses, Talia, go to room number one. Leah, 
Good room number five. Okay, let me have the people here. Um, I think it's Dakari talking. I am saying, yes, SDG 9. Uh huh. Industry, innovation, infrastructure. What are infrastructure? Which room is that? At the plenary? At the plenary? Let us discuss goal number 13. Who is going to take lead? Dr. Nduku, Fanuel, please make it active. Uh, Christian, I think I yes, the, the two um, gadgets brought two different groups, so I need to choose one. Oh, I mean, two okay. groups. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I chose both. I thought it was the same group. I understand now I'm in two groups. Oh, okay. So, so you, you, so you, you are me. gone. You, you are gone. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm gone. Just let me go. Okay. <laughs> Fun one. Unmute, please. Can you lead this group, Dr. Timothy? Fanuel Ondele, are you there? Dr. Timothy, usually people who remain at the plenary are the people who fail to go to their rooms. And now I want to engage you. Grace Mwangangi, can you yes, all sorry. Sorry, yeah, the you. Awesome. Thank sorry, you. Please. I had gone off net uh, some uh, while. Oh. Can you lead the discussion yes. or at, in the plenary? Oh, okay. And um, we are talking about goal maybe, number 13. Yes, maybe we'd wish to have uh, highlights uh, on the goal number 13, kindly. Okay, goal number 13, let me just screen share. Uh, there it is. Are you seeing it? Yes, I'm seeing uh, climate action. Yeah, so th those are the questions that you're discussing with your team. Yes. Okay. Feel free and go ahead. Um okay, now members of the group kindly would wish to have a secretary of the group so that we can uh, actually have a few points on uh, climate change. Kindly who is going to volunteer to be a secretary? Kindly, one member to volunteer to be a secretary of this uh, group, kindly. Mohammed Omar, Lois. Anyone can be. Feel free to discuss. Yes, members, one of you to volunteer to be a secretary so that we go ahead, kindly. Kindly, a member to volunteer to be a secretary, kindly. Yes, who is volunteering kindly? One person. Any member who has volunteered so far? Any volunteer kindly as a secretary? Yes, Mohammed. Mohammed, kindly. Kindly, members, the first question is uh, what climate change impacts have you observed in your area? And what measures can be taken to mitigate these uh, effects? Then the next question is, uh, how can local governments and uh, communities work together to develop and uh, implement effective climate 
action plans. So what, what climate change impacts do we have? We only have a few minutes, members. What are some of the climate change uh, impacts have you observed in your area? Hello. Hello. Yes, kindly. Yes. Yes. Yes, you are, you are listening kindly. It's cold, it's a bit cold, very, very cold nights. Nice. So you cannot predict the normal, the normal, the normal claim that has been established through research. A lot of layers. Uh, and then you can predict what will come next. That's what we personally have observed around Nairobi, uh, with, yeah, especially in Kenya. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. kindly, I'm also requesting you to, to be to also note down the points you have given, you are going to be our secretary. Kindly note down those uh, points. Another person kindly to contribute on uh, climate change the, impact. Doctor, Doctor Timo, my phone won't be able to write anything. It's just a challenge. I'm not in a position to write I can navigate around the communication, but I have a, a very low phone that cannot do much. Okay, I'm also, I'm also getting your voices uh, breaking. Okay, can we have somebody else uh, contribute uh, kindly on um, this uh, climate change impacts you have noticed in your area? Somebody else kindly? As we wait for one of you to prepare, I've noticed in my area a serious um, uh, soil erosion. For example, in the previous uh, rains, uh, I noticed um, landslides, uh, serious erosions, and um, I also noticed um, uh, flooding and uh, Uh, did you want my attention? I received a signal that Group 5 needed yes. my attention. Yes, we needed your attention, eh? Yes. Yeah, we, we have just confirmed the SDG we are discussing. Uh -huh. Yeah, we are Group 5, and uh, we don't know which one. Can you help us know that? We were doing just work on. You are doing. Go, you are doing number thirteen. Climate action. And what cl What climate change impacts have you observed in your area, and what measures yeah. can be taken to mitigate this effect? Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, members, kindly. Please talk. Fanuel, where are you? We need your uh, contribution. Remember, we are live on Facebook. Kindly talk. Let me try to look for these people. Where are they quiet? 
Yes, I'm also wondering uh, why they are quiet. Please unmute yourselves. Uh, please, we need your, your contribution on the main wall, the plenary. Uh, Rose, Mary Njoroge, Rose Mary Njoroge, please unmute yourself. Nicodemus Tunje, please unmute yourself. Uh, cooperate, cooperate so that we can learn. William Masaka, what do you have to say? The president is struggling a lot. What climate change impacts have you observed in your area and what measures can be taken to mitigate these effects? Or you don't or you don't know what climate change is. Yeah, maybe members uh, because of the interest of time because uh, our time is almost ending. Maybe I can uh, contribute on um, action points on mitigating uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the action points would be uh, afforestation and um, reforestation, where we have not planted trees before. We need to plant trees. That is afforestation. Where we have cut trees, we need to do reforestation. We also needed to, where we got run off, we need to do serious gambions to prevent gambions. Mm -hmm. Yes, where I come from, uh, we have got serious uh, sand harvesting. We need to prevent uh, sand harvesting in uh, those uh, water, water, water ways. Because once you harvest, uh, you create more room for more erosion. Yes, climate change, uh, we need to address climate change also in terms of uh, what we use at home. Uh, for example, these um, refrigerators, we need to take care of the, the refrigerators we use. We need to use uh, CFC refrigerators, chlorofluorocarbon uh, free refrigerators so that we don't have um, the ozone layer depletion. Yeah, we also need to minimize on uh, carbon dioxide emissions. That means um, if it is fuel, we need to continue using the unleaded uh, petrol to reduce on uh, these uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And again, um, we need to minimize on the use of charcoal and also wood as a source of fuel. And also maybe we go for gas. We need to use gas more in our homes so as to reduce more on the, the carbon, uh, carbon dioxide emissions because carbon dioxide contributes to global warming and the global warming has got long-term effects uh, global warming can lead to uh, melting of ice, and once uh, ice melts, in the uh, will that contribute to rising sea level, and uh, uh, that will have a long-term effect in the flooding of the zone of the ocean uh, shores. So those are some of my the points I can uh, contribute on uh, mitigation on the climate uh, action. So members of the group, anybody else to add something? On mitigation measures, because our time is almost running out. Uh, I something, hello. Yes, hello. hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes. To uh, I Sorry, to... I I arrived late. I mean, I joined There's the no meeting problem. late. Uh, Asante, There's no problem. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll be answering correctly. Uh, I stand to be corrected. Uh, one of the impacts of uh, climate change 
is on uh, yes. on human health um i'm yes. i'm thinking like recently we had very high temperatures and so when yes. these temperatures rise this leads to increase in heat of course and and and, yeah. and the related uh, illnesses that come with increased heat uh yep. some 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 humans may be so weak and they may even die out of uh these rising temperatures uh, climate change can also affect our agriculture in the sense that yep. um some crops um the, the the quality and the quantity of some crops that require yep. Uh, average temperatures, average uh, climates may, may be affected. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm thinking of um, a crop like like sugar, sugar cane, a crop like sugar cane. Of course, if there is a lot of heat, the, the, the content of the sugar will be reduced. And sometimes, That's not sometimes, where there is a lot of uh, heat, the sugar, even in your own house, if if you put sugar on high temperatures, uh, on a cooker with high temperatures, it will change the color. And so uh, that has, of course, affected the quality and the quantity of that particular crop. Uh, yeah. Before I go on, I, I don't know whether I am right. Am I yeah, answering you are right. the question? Continue. Yes, continue. Then uh, you can give us a few mitigation measures. Yes. Uh, a few mitigation measures, uh, I want to believe mm -hmm. they have already been uh, shared. Uh, for example, when we talk about uh, planting more trees, uh, of course, this will uh, bring uh, or cause rain, and of course, the high temperatures will be reduced. And so the, the, the heat-related deaths and illnesses will also be either minimized or uh, inter intervened. Uh, and so is even to the second uh, example that I have given, that is the impact on agriculture. Of course, we are talking about either very high temperatures or very low temperatures, depending on where uh, it is. So those uh, um, those very high or, or very minimal uh, temperatures will affect and so how do we do that i, I think the first uh, intervention that i've given can also apply here thank you yes hello the other hello the other the other medication uh, medication uh, hello yes we are listening kindly hello Yes, yes, we are listening. I would like to introduce something. Yes, this is David from Kisumu, yeah, thank you. Kenya. Yes, David. Yes, uh, I have the following to make. One is that we can do greening of institutions, greening of schools, like what we did recently in Kenya, where schools were given yes. a holiday where they were supposed to plant trees eh? and uh, yeah. put photos to that effect. And I want to make this yeah. clear. We have both mac macro and microclimate. Microclimate yes. change is always neglected. Say, for example, we always use fertilizers. Fertilizers, they end up killing the habitat, killing the microorganisms in the soil. And even other yeah. organisms like the earthworm, which will cause help us in aeration. We have always neglected yes. biodiversity. We have cut down some of the nature's trees, which are very important, forming very important habitats for various animals. I read up bringing yes. I mean, exotic uh, trees. This again has brought a lot yep. of imbalance when it comes to biodiversity. Comes to biodiversity. Mm -hmm. So this is a key thing that I would like us to address so much so that we have a balanced ecology. Ecosystem yep. is unbalanced as of now. 
And yes. that aside, even the introduction of other type of fish species where others are now being depleted. For example, when we had the Nile Pike like Victoria, now there are some fish species yeah. which are now, they are very hard to come by. So yeah. this is something, and then I, I, I wrote a paper on this. I wrote a paper on uh, how we can use interpersonal skills to enhance sustainability in learning institutions. Yes. Because sustainability yeah. is something collective. And if you can yes. enhance interpersonal skills, then we'll be somewhere. Because you know, my, yeah. my problem is the problem of everybody. When I don't do my part, yeah. everybody suffers. Yes. Hello? So this is very key. Yes. And I would like perhaps to share that paper when it's done, so that we get to know how we can use this now to enhance in, in, um, sustainability. Even in this classroom situation, sure. teachers can use pedagogy, pedagogical sustainable methods of teaching. And this again yeah. can help the learners get to know how to go about what sustainability. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you so yeah. much for those questions. And later, would wish to you to share that paper with us. And share that paper later with uh, Dr. Kristen so that she can share it with the rest of us. Any other okay. contribution on uh, the impact or the mitigation measures? Because our time is almost uh, widening up. And I have something to make. I just put it for thought. Hello? Yes. Hello? Now, yes, we, we will also listening. consider, uh, I feel strongly that we can also make a look at this social climate. Because social climate, again, will affect the physical climate. Yes. So can we think about that in our next part? Oh, yeah. I hope uh, Dr. Christine has said that. So thank you. Hello. 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 Are you listening kindly? Hello, Mohammed. Uh, unmute yourself, Mohammed. We are listening. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yes, good evening. Uh, it, let me go to the common uh, changes in, in uh, the impacts of the uh, impact of the, of the climate changes. Yes. Uh, the climate change. The climate change. I think increase. Uh, the frequency and severity of natural disasters like uh, floods, wildfires, etc. So the rise yes. of the sea also affecting coastal areas. This one uh -huh. affects uh, yes. the weather patterns, disrupting agriculture. So in the urbanization, yes. we have uh, overcrowding and strain on uh, infrastructure. That one affects overcrowding and strain, whatever. Uh, increased poll po pollution and waste of man man management issues. I think this is these are the industries and all that. Loss of green spaces and uh, body biodiversity. We have this yes. one in urbanization. Economic inequality. That's the third one in which you have. Is that uh, disparity in access to education, healthcare, and job opportunities, housing yes. uh, affordability and homelessness, food insecurity. Then you have the public health, which is spread of infection diseases, mental health crisis, access to healthcare yes. services. With the technology yes. and, uh, advancement, we have job uh, displacement due to automation, digital divide impacting access to information and device and services, privacy yes. and cybersecurity concerns. That's the technological part of it of advancement. Then mitigation yeah, so measures. Can imagine. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mit mitigation measures. This is the climate change mitigation, in investing in natural in renewable energy sources, solar, wind, hydro, and all that. 
implementing stricter, yes. stricter emissions regulations, enhancing disaster yes. pre, uh, preparedness and uh, response systems, promoting sustainable agriculture and uh, conservation practices. With the urban yes. planning and development, you can have the with the efficient development of public transportation systems, uh, as well as implementation yes. of uh, green building standards. All right, uh, expanding urban green spaces and parks, uh, promoting uh, mixed up, mixed use development to reduce commute. Okay, commute. okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mohammed. <laughs> Thank oh, we you. Are back. We are back in style. Thank you very much yes, because of the conversations that uh, were going on in the rooms. That was awesome. I hope you enjoyed and you learned a lot. I will request sure. that now we report back in one minute. Try to summarize so that we don't take a lot of time here. So just give us the uh, the key takeaways that you you discussed in your group. So we are going to start with group number, let me go to group number nine, Farida and your team. Who is reporting? Bariki. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Baraki, we yeah. can. Yes, um, actually, I joined very late, uh, but uh, I tried to connect and share what I have. So what uh, we have been sharing is like, uh, we have to start with discussing what really SDGs are, so that we can have, we can create uh, the awareness to whoever we are going to work with. And specifically, um, I shared how we are working on uh, as a university in uh, innovative pedagogy and what we have, what I have been doing there. I, that's what I shared. Like, how do uh, the teachers, the would be teachers, when they go to the practicum, work with their students? Like, for example, uh, using. Um, recyclable materials and my colleague from Kenya uh, what she mentioned was that she was really working with her students especially to create the awareness so that the starting from the vocabulary what do we mean by SDG and creating the awareness so that they can have the language they can have the capacity and they can even share it with their parents and whoever is working with them so that in that way it will be very easy to uh, share the what innovation means with her students. I mean, awesome. shortly, this is what we were talking about. Awesome. So you're going to take a screenshot of your notes and share them to either to the to the chat or to you will share them to my WhatsApp. Okay, let's go to group one. Uh, Dr. Maina, Rose, and team, who is reporting? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it is Rose who was our team leader, and uh, she appointed me to report, so I'll try to make an effort. And uh, Sustainable Goal Development 9 was about industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And the aim is to build resilience, infrastructure, promote inclusivity, sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. So the first question where we agreed that uh, the introduction of cottage industry has allowed innovators to showcase their creativity and earn a living from their innovation. Uh, some industry have benefited from low taxation, allowing them to grow and prosper. Additionally, the blue economy has supported fishing and other economy. We also have some boreholes which have been sunk in some areas in in Kenya, where they are allowing now people to grow vegetables using uh, water from the boreholes and therefore eating healthy as also well earning something from that. The second question was, how do we help the SMEs uh, to thrive? And uh, there were several ideas. One of was capacity building them. 
so that they are able to have talent and skill. The second one was financial support. How do we give them grants so that they can uh, play at the same level as other industry? The other one was market access. If they are producing anything, how can they be given opportunity to market? Then there was an issue of infrastructure and technology. How can we give them opportunity to modernize and be able to meet the standards? So I think one minute is done awesome. for that. Thank you very much. You're, you're wonderful, Dr. Maina. <laughs> oh, that is very good. Let's go to group number eight. Dr. Mutua and team, who is reporting? Group number eight, Dr. Mutua. Yes, uh, yeah, I am. I was yeah. trying to unmute. Okay. Yes. Thank you. We are in group eight, and uh, we were discussing goal number six. And number one is what are the key challenges to achieve peace and justice in your community, and how can they be overcome? Uh, one of the challenges that we discussed is equality, uh, which is a, a, a challenge to achieve peace and justice. And uh, how we cover, uh, we discuss how, how we can, can overcome it is by educating people the importance of e equality. Then we talk of also again poor governor. And the, this one, we discussed it at length, that, that challenge that how we can overcome the poor governor. Uh, looking at our situation in Kenya today with the young people and also with everybody is by sharing resources equally. And also um, instilling th those values that help the young people to have some integrity in life and also uh, helping uh, people to participate in in involvement in participation and also knowing their constitution very well. And also we talk of uh, uh, gender, uh, gender in which is not equal gender equality which is not uh, which is oppressive and uh, how can we uh, help the gender to be equal and we realize education is very key to gender equality if people can be educated in early stages to have uh, they, they know that they are equal this will also help them even in that workplace that all people are created in the image of God and we are equal. We need to participate and have things together. Another challenge that we talk about is corruption. And how can we overcome, uh, overcome the corruption is by also having some in integrity and integrity has to be instilled in early enough uh, for young people as early enough so that they can also show the example. And then uh, we talk about number two, which was how can we strengthen local institutions to ensure they are inclusive, accountable, and effective. And uh, um, in our group, we are mixed well, having a data there. Uh, we shared on, uh, we, the resources is being shared with these, the institutions. And we started straight away by uh, supporting those institutions uh, by leading the way, showing them love and sharing what we have together. And being supportive also, and uh, checking them and doing auditing, no wastage. And uh, we have the regular um, uh, integrated so that there's no discrimination that they learn. Those institutions can learn that every child is equal to the other and need opportunity to learn. Thank you. I think 
I have that one minute. Thank you very much, sister. You've really tried, eh? Uh, both go. Group Sandy. number two. I know one minute it looks like it is very little, but you can cover a lot. Thank you. Bosco, group number two. Bosco and team. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, for group number. Yes, for group number two, we were looking at the first question was what strategies can be implemented to reduce income inequality in both urban and rural areas? We discussed this at length and we, we uh, first we say that our opportunities to be equally given to both genders. Again, we also say that uh, create awareness of inequality among community members in rural areas. We also felt that uh, for this to happen, we need to be the champion. We need to be at the forefront to ensure that we encourage the marginalized group and we also enlighten them on what is going on for them to be able to come out from such groups. We also, we also need sensitization and also kind of just get out of our culture because we felt like like uh, most of the African communities, you realize that uh, still believe that uh, women are homemakers and no, they're not supposed to work. So we uh, we felt like for us to to uh, uh, one strategy is to sensitize the community and just uh, tell inform them on the importance of both genders being able to uh, do the same or rather be in the same positions another another mm -hmm. point is hold trainings or groups to encourage the marginalized group especially women and uh, we allow these marginalized groups like for example if it is women in a in an organization they can form their group where they they can talk freely of what they go through they share their feelings and at the same time they will feel so comfortable they will be had and their issues will be addressed and with okay. that uh, it will it will encourage them to the second also another and uh, last point is uh, we also felt like uh, in this line of promoting um, encouraging marginalized group which in african society for the longest time has been girl child we felt like also boy child needs to be uh, uh, considered because uh, at some point boy child was being left uh, when the girl child education and empowerment came on board. So we also felt like it is very important to balance the two and just ensure that even as we empower the girl child, the boy child is also not left behind. Uh, the next Good. question is how, the second I question think, I is think how, we stop. We can stop there and then we will share on the group because of time uh, so that we okay move then. to the next group. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, uh, Gladys. Next is uh, group seven, Janice. Janice and your team. Yes. We were discussing on life on land. Mm -hmm. And we came up with this when we were answering question number one, which was asking about what initiatives can be taken to protect and restore local forests and biodiversity. We came up with the following points. Deforestation and afforestation will assist to restore planting native tree species. This one is key. We realize that it is key that it will conserve wild plants and animals. Also, we protected the soil and the water sources that make part of that forest ecosystem. We also do support organizations that deal with the protection of the environment or the conservation of the forest through our local government. Then question number two, it was asking about how can sustainable agricultural practices be promoted to ensure the health of terrestrial ecosystems? We are not sure whether we got the question right, but we said 
through organizing cleanup events to sustain the ecosystem of our local green space. And also we ensure that as much as possible, we don't use pesticides and chemicals on uh, our green environment so that we can protect the quality of the soil. Also, we use renewable energy, which will reduce the emission of harmful pollutants to the environment because we know the effects of these harmful emissions. Good. We also talked of using restoration projects, if possible, uh, to be emphasized, like the combats area forestation fund management, if it can be available or through the national afforestation programs. That is what we did. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to group three, Benjamin Kilonzo and team, who is reporting? Which Benjamin, my teacher? No, Benjamin Kilonzo. You are group six. Okay. Mr. Mauko, you are group six. You are next. Group three, who is reporting? Okay. Let's the go. Secretary. Let's... Where are you? Who is the secretary, Masese? Not me. There was the secretary. He also was the chair. Okay. So who is the secretary? No. Okay. Why is yeah, okay. You can can okay. Organize your house, then we come back to you. Let's go to group six. Benjamin Mauko, Maritim, who is reporting? Benjamin Mauko is the one reporting. Okay, that um, was goal number? Uh, ours was goal number 13 on climatic action. Okay. We had uh, two questions. Uh, we had two questions, but one of them we broke into two. Mm -hmm. The first question was, what climatic change impacts have you observed in your area? And uh, and what measures can be taken to mitigate against this? Then the second question was, how can local government and communities work together to develop and uh, implement effective climate plans? So straight away, I'll go to question 1A. Uh, that is uh, the climatic change impacts that we have witnessed in our areas. We straight away went to the uh, to the points, and point number one was drying up of uh, rivers as a result of interference of their sources, like the Mao water towers. Number two, we also observed in our places we are observing that some areas are. There is a lot of desertification going on, and in some areas there is uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, we have excess rain. No, just a moment. I was writing in uh, desertification is one of the uh, interferences that we identified. Then number three, we also identified unusual climatic patterns, which have. Uh, manifested themselves in the form of uh, excess or minimal rainfall and uh, yeah. other items such as uh, strong winds which have been witnessed in the in, in the recent past all of us remember hurricane hidaya which came from tanzania and was almost hitting us uh, the excess rain patterns has its own disadvantages the landslide the destruction of the infrastructure and all that goes with that. Awesome, so thank you. I did fight. Somebody saying something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying thank you very much. Because of time, uh, we will mm. share the notes. Let's go to group four, Fanwal and Hadija and team. Who is reporting? Thank you so okay. much, my student. One minute, please. Welcome, okay. madam. Yeah. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Okay, so we were discussing uh, the SDG number 
number 12 on responsible consumption and, and uh, production mm -hmm. and uh, so what were some of the ways what are some of the ways individuals can contribute to responsible consumption and reduce waste in their lives that was question number one and the role that businesses can take on uh, in promoting sustainable production practices and promoting eco-friendly production products so one of the things that we say was that we need to promote civic education to increase awareness on food management and conservation and this should be done at individual and corporate level uh, we say that businesses need to adopt packaging that is uh, sustainable so packaging that can allow for reuse or recycling either businesses can recall the packaging then they can reuse them again or people can have the, the advantage of recycling the the, the packaging and then we say there should be individual initiatives on uh, lifelong learning so that we are able to understand proper ways of uh, waste management and responsibility. We also say that there should be proper planning before investing in production and uh, waste reduction uh, initiatives. And, and that is at individual and uh, corporate level, especially at the government, so that we, use, we reduce wastage and uh, wasteful use of resources, which could be redirected to other areas of economic growth. And then we say that people need to be trained on proper waste, waste reduction uh, with the same same objective of preventing wastage. Awesome. Thank you very um, much. Thank you very much. Next, we go to Abby. Abby and team. Which goal were you looking at? Goal number? I, I, I think that was uh, number five. Group five? I so it looks like you gave two groups the same question. Okay, but give us your point. So, some of the questions. We, we, we looked at uh, the recent flood as one of the effects of climate change that happened in Kenya here. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the effects was uh, food production, the uh, We had... Uh, Destruction of houses, we had uh, lost lives, roads were impossible, transport was affected, mobility was just a problem, and we also had lack of clean water for drinking, uh, sanitation was uh, just a problem, and also, above all, school going children uh, were not able to continue their mm -hmm. curriculum in school. And then looking at the education, uh, when we're talking about the government policy and the community, uh, we thought of improving the policies that are governing the operation between the government and also the community. Uh, joint action plans with a view to come together. E.g., we had a tree planting as an action plan initiated by the government and people ventured into it. Many people planted trees. Uh, improvement drainage system. Uh, good planning during construction of dams because uh, even after we had a lot of water uh, during that uh, flood, when the flood went off, people missed a lot of water despite the fact that we have dams, so there is poor planning. Awesome. Um, he has uh, putting Thank up you. structures away that is riparian land. Um, yeah, like you said, I think those are the few that we had. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Let's go to the plenary, Dr. Kilonzo and Vijedi, you were there. And you had the largest team. You are also talking about climate action. Please add what has not been given to us. Thank you, Dr. Christine. Yes, uh, mine is just to add uh, what others have already, a few, of, uh, a few points uh, from what others have given. Yes, one of the climate change impacts, uh, in addition to what uh, our colleagues have given, is landslides. We have witnessed the landslides uh, in Kenya as a country. We have also witnessed, um, uh, not now in Kenya, but generally we have got increase in sea level in case of a uh, flooding. Um, in case of melting of ice, which can also lead to flooding of coastal regions. Uh, climate uh, impact, again, we have got global warming due to carbon dioxide emissions. We also have uh, ozone layer depletion due to chlorof 
chlorofluorocarbon emissions. Uh, we also witnessed, uh, for instance, in Kenya, washing away of vehicles, leading to deaths. <laughs> Landslides. And also landslides, uh, uh, houses being, um, yeah, due to the landslides, houses being washed away. Awesome. And also, leading. then, uh, effective action um, in the local community and also county governments, uh, additional points include um, serious reforestation where trees have been cut. We also need uh, serious uh, afforestation where trees have never been planted before. For example, in Kenya, we have got the presidential directive in uh, so that we have got 15 billion uh, trees being planted by the year 2030. So we are working on that uh, action plan. Um, the, our group also recommended on um, use of petroleum gas instead of uh, avoid the uh, use of charcoal and use of wood fuel as much as possible, because that way we'll take care of uh, trees. Um, then we also, the last two points we gave is, um, if it is petrol, use of unleaded petrol for vehicles. And also if it is refrigerators in our homes, use of uh, CFC free refrigerators, which cannot emit chlorofluorocarbons. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. In other words, you're saying goal number 13 calls for urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Yeah, this has been an area that everybody has been looking at. I hope everybody is now at peace with climate action and we are all doing everything we can do to try to combat uh, climate change. So climate change affects all aspects of life. It's crucial to strengthen our resilience and adaptive capacity to be able to see the change that we are talking about. So maybe yes. uh, the, the goal that has not been shared that is clear. goal number... Maritime, please mute yourself. Uh, goal number 14, life below water. It's about conserving and sustainably using the oceans, the seas, the marine resources very well. Marine ecosystems are vital for global food security, especially climate regulation and biodiversity. So life below water is not just about uh, animals. Uh, we also have some creatures like uh, what you can see. Marine life is, 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 is really rich. That is what we call the blue economy. So something has to be done. Uh, which, which goal again was not uh, touched goal number number which one goal eleven number, goal number eleven or goal number two yeah goal goal number eleven I'm sorry I tried to get in I was kicked out so okay. I was a secretary and I I couldn't but now I'm in so we were able to talk about uh, what the cities and so mm -hmm. our question was what are some practical steps in to become um, more sustainable. One of the issues that arose was the use of flood waters, uh, being able to manage the water when it rains so that the drainage designs should be made to accommodate large amounts of water. Then there was uh, better planning of, uh, of how the waters, again, flood waters have to be taken care of and Part of the flood waters was the construction of dams to uh, preserve water for use even at a later time. Planting of forests was another way that we thought uh, could help in that. And industries that emit uh, 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 things that are not required should be treated before leaving or before starting the project so that uh, there's no interference with what is already there. And awesome. then uh, ad adopting clean energy was another way uh, where 
uh, instead of using diesel, we use electrical transport, for example, and that would uh, reduce the amount of uh, pollution to the environment. Then, awesome. uh, then there was solid waste material. Uh, they should be segregated, reused, and even recycled. So that was another way of a practical way of working with that. Then greening our cities where we have trees and flowers. And when this is done, the bad gases will be absorbed. And uh, designated areas, um, forest mm -hmm. areas to sink the carbon so that we know that the carbon is being sunk somewhere. Uh, and a question on policies was also brought out. Policies that administer climate change response. So that was something else that uh, came up. And okay. then uh, lastly, there was residential and working uh, for the conservation of the environment and ownership of the activities where the, the people in the community are able to see, to be part of, of what is being done. They own awesome. um, the planting, they own the Thank anything you. that is being done. Yes, so that was the first question. And then in the second question- I think the, I think the second question, plan. you can uh, share the notes so that I can now put them together and share across. That will be very good. Thank okay. you, because of time. And uh, goal number 17, I think the group missed it out. Goal number 17, we were supposed to talk about partnerships for the goals. Uh, goal number 17 emphasizes the importance of strengthening global partnerships to achieve the SDGs. Collaboration between governments, private sector, and civil society is really, really very, very crucial. So wherever you are, uh, don't do things on your own. Try as much as possible to get someone you can partner with, to get an organization you can partner with, to get a, another government that you can partner with. That is the only way we can be able to achieve these goals. And so <laughs> achieving sustainable development goals uh, calls for global vision. The SDGs provide a comprehensive framework to address the world's most pressing challenges. It calls for inclusive approach. Collaboration across all sectors and communities is very essential. And it also calls for action or, or orientation, yeah? Should be action oriented. Every individual, every organization, Every government has a role to play in driving sustainable change. So what are our takeaways? Holistic effort, the goals are interconnected, remember? Requiring integrated solutions. You cannot just say I'm solving this one alone and that is it, no, they are interconnected. Local and global impact actions at the local level always contribute to the global process. That is why we have to come together as a globe. That is why we are discussing on this platform as a globe and not just one country. And then innovation and partnerships essential to create scalable and sustainable solutions. First for to action, let us educate others, let us advocate for the SDGs, raise awareness and educate others about the SDGs. Remember, not everyone even knows that they exist. If you go to social gathering, when you are going to take your cup of tea or your beer or whatever, talk about SDGs. I mean, if you're in a, in a public gathering, Try to talk about SDGs. Let people get aware, be aware of what is happening in the globe. Collaborate, partner with stakeholders across various uh, sectors, and then take action. Implement sustainable practices in your daily life and community. The things that we were discussing in our groups, go implement. Remember, together we can transform our world and create a sustainable, equitable, and prosperous future for all. Uh, thank you very much. Any question? Anybody with a question? Any insights?
as we now wind up our presentation or our learning session today. Remember, we are talking about sustainable development goals. There are 17 and they are not like... Um, I have a... Yes, Bosco? Go ahead. Uh, for me, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. And I think this is a noble... Um, um, this is a noble idea and uh, I would encourage you to keep doing it. Um, I'm an innovator and I follow the SDGs very well. So I innovated a solution that can give youths and the vulnerable a chance to be self-employed. And I'm looking forward to empowering and working together closely with anyone from Africa or across. So I'll be happy to partner and we can discuss on the side. Awesome. Uh, Bosco, I hope you have my number. I can connect you to whoever you want to be connected to. Uh, just uh, reach out to me. Thank you very much. So I am because you are. Uh, hello. Yes, Benson. Who is talking? Hello, this is Lillian. Yes, Lillian. Um, thank you to join you. I joined a little late, but I'm glad uh, that I'm on this platform. I am a high school teacher, yeah. and uh, I was just saying it's important that we start teaching these SDGs in schools seriously. I know they're captured somehow in the school uh, curriculum, uh, but we need to come out intentionally, you know, and talk about what is SDG one, two, three, four. Um, though I'm privileged to do it with my students, we've uh, mainly been, uh, you know, joining the global goals classrooms and they've learned a bit and I've seen the impact it has had on my students. We mainly have centered on SDG 13 and 14, but you can see they all, you know, uh, affect one another. And especially my students have learned to reduce littering. So if we start it at... Um, you know, our tender age, then uh, our world is going to be a better place. They've, uh, we came up with statistics of the biropens we use in school and how we can, you know, what we can do with them. We collect them in bottles, you know, plastic bottles that are used in the school. And then, you know, there's a vendor who comes to pick them and goes to dispose them off correctly because we realize that, you know, uh, as much as we are so far away from the ocean, you know, still that small biropen can still get to the ocean and affect our, you know, our environment. So thank you for the insights. And I'm hoping to attend more of these and, uh, yeah, have more partnerships with um, the, so, you know, uh, society out there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lilian. Uh, yeah, Dr. Kilonso, your hand is up. Yes, Dr. Ray, just a quick one because of the interest of time. I know you are trying to wind up. Mine is just to comment that uh, if governments across the world can implement uh, or if they can have uh, these uh, sustainable development goals as their manifestos, the world will really be the best place to be here. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you very much. And so I want to end with the phrase of Ubuntu. I am because you are. Uh, this is actually a phrase that is rooted in the Southern African philosophy of Ubuntu. The concept emphasizes the interconnectedness of all people and the idea that once humanity is intrinsically linked to the humanity of others. In the context of what we've been discussing, this philosophy can serve as a powerful overarching theme that underscores the importance of collective action and global solidarity in achieving the goals. And so a new day is coming, new life is coming. There is hope because of the little things that we are doing. So go out there, and reach out to other people and yes, sensitize them, talk about them in schools and let's have many people uh, advancing the sustainable development goals. Remember, take care of yourself, 
take care of others and take care of the planet. And before you go kindly, Bye. because I need your contacts, uh, let me put this on the chat so that you can register yourself if you've not uh, registered yourself before. Um, I want everyone in the meeting, please click on that link. And if you have not joined the Education for Sustainable Development group, my number is plus one six four seven eight nine one four seven eight four. Kindly inbox me so that I can share the link for you to share to join the ESG Global Group uh, so that you don't miss out. Thank you very much. Ross, you wanted to say something, even as you say what you're saying, please pray for us at the end. Thank you, Dr. Sari. I think there are some new members who are asking how they'll get the recording. It's good to know that. Okay. Once they... okay. Yeah, please click on that link. I will have your number. I will have your contacts. I will share uh, even the presentation if you so want. Because knowledge is non rivalry. I can give it to you so that you can use it to share with your students or other staff members. So please register, uh, inbox me, and I will be able to support you as much as possible. Otherwise, may God bless you. Ross, are you yeah. praying for us or somebody else is praying for us? Dr. Maido Wagyoko, seriously, please say something before we, we go. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's a good initiative to have this community where we are learning from each other and sharing our homegrown ideas. It's good for us to own these uh, solutions and uh, co-create and ground them based on our environment, our exposure and the resources we have. We can solve all these issues. We can respond to them and we can be accountable to Mother Earth as part of what we do every day. Thank you. Awesome. Fanuel Ondele, please say something. Is Fanuel still there? Yes, 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 I'm still there. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I've loved the presentation from the start to the end. And uh, that's part of uh, uh, the great thing that we're doing in the Environmental Discipleship Program. I know that will be a discussion for you, but thanks so much for the participation, the presentation, the insights that have. And uh, just blessings to everybody this week and many other days. God bless you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, um, Merab, Merab, where are you? Um, these are facilitators for this uh, whatever program. Merab, where are you? Please say something. Janet Vijedi, please say something. Um, thank you, thank you so much. I also want to thank God even for giving us uh, every evening an opportunity to meet and deliberate matters affecting the whole nation, the whole world. Uh, we cannot take it for granted. Thank you for the facilitators of the day. And of course, all the participants. Without the participants, then of course we'll be saying we are doing nothing. I want Thank to you. call upon each one of us at least to be uh, arriving on time because Sunday is a very delicate day. And uh, knowing that uh, the following day is a working day, when we go beyond nine, I start seeing people falling off. And uh, maybe the time they are falling off, that is when Dr. Tari wants to throw a, a bombshell <laughs> and we end up missing it. So, um, and, and uh, probably we can also look at the content we want to deliver 
uh, maybe we are delivering too much in one session and we still have more sessions uh, so that we deliberate uh, fully on the matters at hand and, and, and therefore we can end the meeting in time. Otherwise, thank you so yeah. much. Every time I'm here, I feel I belong. Thank you. Awesome. Al Almazi Baraki, is it from Ghana or Namibia? Please say something. Then, Sister Mary, you pray for us. Yes, I am from Ethiopia, actually. Ethiopia, yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm from Ethiopia, yeah. Mm. Um, well, th th this is a very great learning platform and I, I really enjoyed that I joined. And although I was late today, uh, but uh, I, I'm learning every day and I'm sure there will be um, a lot of contribution that uh, we can work together to make the world a little better. This is what I would like to say. And thank you very much, really, for uh, having me in this uh, group. I'm very happy. You're welcome. Next, we are, we are coming to Ethiopia now to meet face to face. Sister Mary, please, parting shot and prayer. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for this evening and for this opportunity, Lord. Not all be, will be in vain, and we trust and we hope that what we are learning here, Lord, we may share generously. For the sake of God's people, Lord, give us inner strength never to give up. It's never too late. And I want to, would like to pray for all the participants and the facilitator, especially Dr. Christine, to keep up with this, to keep on going, it will bear fruit. I pray that as we depart from here, Lord, that what we have learned, we may implement. All this as through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good night. Yeah, Amen. those in African countries, good night. Have a blessed afternoon. Thank good. you. Yeah. Good night. Thank good you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Good.